look at me. Do I look crazy to you? I didn't think so. So then, why does it feel like I am? I'm sure you've seen the headlines right now. Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. And that really piqued my curiosity here. That really stirred my spaghetti. I had to wonder, how? How is such a thing possible? The first Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey is just a complete throwaway waste of time pile of garbage. It was purely banking off the shock of making a Winnie the Pooh horror movie since the property went public domain. It felt like they just speed ran to be the first ones to make a horror movie with it. It's a very low budget and it seems like it was rushed out as quickly as possible and there's just nothing redeeming about it past the silliness of its concept. And really there's only one good scene in the film. And I'm using the word good very loosey-goosey. There's only one really entertaining scene in the film, and it's pretty much the opening scene. I mention this every time I talk about this movie. Winnie the Pooh rips some lady's top off and her titties start jiggling around like it's an NVIDIA physics demonstration. And then he throws her in a wood chipper. But not before giving her like an ooga face. It's like the most emotion Winnie the Pooh showed in that entire movie. But regardless, that film is horrendous. And yet, its sequel, which came out, has a 100% Rotten Tomatoes. Granted, it's only seven reviews. Like, I, I, I didn't think such a thing was possible. Like, you know, I guess maybe that seven paid reviewers, they were shilling it. Maybe the director of the film gave them strippers and blow for the advanced screening, so they had a great time watching it. Uh, but that I, I couldn't imagine that being real. But the audience score is also pretty high, and I've always said you can't trust Rotten Tomatoes, but still, this is interesting. So, I went and saw Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 today, and I have to wonder if I'm suffering from psychosis, because there's no way I watch the same film that they're reviewing. It's still bad. Now, I will say, it is an astronomical improvement over the first film. But that's like saying, solid poop is better than diarrhea. Like, you're not wrong, but it's still shit. And maybe that's a bit too harsh. I wouldn't say it's shit, it's just not good, either. Like, I know they're creating the whole universe out of this so they're making like the twisted childhood universe or whatever where it's taking property like Winnie the Pooh, Pinocchio, Peter Pan, Bambi and they're making horror movies out of it and tying it all together into their own horror cinematic universe with all of it and I think that's like a really fun idea like I, I conceptually that makes me laugh and I think that's what they're going for here with 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 all of that but right now they're just starting to find their footing on how to make watchable movies because the first movie is unwatchable this movie is definitely watchable it's just not a great film either the movie does try a lot harder it's still low budget but you can tell it's a higher budget and they put a lot more effort into it so first of all i'm gonna get my compliments out of the way here they actually do a much better job with the character design this time around. Winnie the Pooh looks a lot better. It no longer just looks like some kind of fetish costume with Winnie the Pooh. It looks like an actual character now. It doesn't look like just a man in a mask. It actually does look like a mutant abomination, which it's supposed to be in the universe. They absolutely did a much better job this time around with the monsters here. And they do bring in a new face, a new villain, Tigger. So they bring him in from the Winnie the Pooh property. And he is, <laughs> he's probably my favorite part of the film, just because of how over the top they had this character play. They also bring in an owl, but Tigger was a standout, because every time he's on screen, he just calls women bitches. So he goes on a killing spree at like a nightclub, it, it, very reminiscent of like the scene from Blade, or even like John Wick, but if there was no one fighting back, just executing people in a nightclub, really. In fact, it has nothing to do with John Wick. I'm just thinking of scenes with nightclubs. But anyway, he goes to a rave, and he starts just murdering every person there just because. He's piling up corpses. And every time he's about to murder a woman, he makes sure to call them a bitch. So it'll be like, hey, bitch. And then, like, slash their head off. Or if he's, like going on like a stabbing spree with his long fingernails, his claws, he's like, I'm gonna disembowel you, bitch. To every single one of his female victims. Every single one of them. That's his most used phrase. And that definitely did have me laughing a little bit. It's not exactly the most highbrow <laughs> writing or anything, but it also shows that the movie didn't take itself too seriously the entire time. And that's when the movie's at its best, when it's not being super serious. There's a couple of referential jokes and meta jokes that they make that I actually did think land. Like, I, I thought they did a pretty good job when it came to, like, some of the humor they interject in here. 
But unfortunately, that's all overshadowed by trying to tell a really serious, dramatic narrative. So, in the first film, there's no story whatsoever. It's just random killings, and they're not very creative either. It's like the most stereotypical slasher type killings like getting hit with something in the head and they die or getting run over by a car nothing too creative in this movie another compliment i have for it is the kills are significantly more creative they definitely had more of a budget to work with so they showed you some more interesting and more gruesome things the very first scene like winnie the pooh starts breaking a woman's every single one of this woman's appendages and then puts her head in a bear trap and slams it on her and it's fucking gruesome and someone else is like burning to death in the background and owl is spitting like acidic venom on people as their face is melting like there's a lot more creativity to the way that they kill uh, but i do actually have a statement on that that i'll get to when i talk about the negatives in fact I'm, i don't even know why i'm alluding to it here one of the things that takes away from that though is that because it's a low budget they know that if you could see everything in broad daylight you'd immediately tell how phony baloney it is and it'd take you out of it so instead they obscure all of it with like the darkest and most close-up shots imaginable sometimes when you're watching winnie or tigger or owl kill someone it looks like you're looking at it through a fucking microscope like you're looking at their goddamn cells like you can't really tell what's happening sometimes all you know is someone is being brutally murdered because you can hear it you can kind of see like inklings of something on screen but it is so fucking dark half the time you can't make out what's going on so that is a big complaint i have because they do try and get more creative they do succeed in being more creative but still, they're betrayed by their budget because they have to keep showing you it in a really hard to figure out what's going on way. So shaky cam, super dark, cutaways, all this type of like nauseating like camera work ruins some of the scenes. And they do use CGI occasionally in here. And hooey is it rough. There are some scenes that look straight up in 64 era. Like Tigger's Tail, for example. Goodness gracious. Also, in the opening scene, when someone is set on fire, I'm pretty sure that was just JPEG fire that they moved around a little bit. It, it, there is a lot of times when they try and integrate CGI into this film that you can really see they did not have the budget for those special effects. That, that It was just not there for that. But when they're using practical effects, for the most part, it looks pretty good. Back to what I was saying, the first film didn't really have a story at all. Just random killings with things that vaguely resembled Winnie and Piglet. Nothing else. Just, that's the whole story in a nutshell. Here, they did bring on a real writer, and they wanted to tell a real story. But it just does not match the tone of the film. The film is at its best when it's being over the top and goofy. When it's trying to be really serious by telling the story about Christopher Robin, who ha his brother got kidnapped, and he's going through hypnotherapy to try and remember... His brother kind of actually reminds me of the plot to the Five Nights at Freddy's movie in a certain way. But he's trying to figure out what happened to his brother. If I could only figure out who this man was that took him because I saw a piece of him in my memories, then I'll know what happened and I can get my brother back. So it tries to make you care about that story and care about these characters in a different way by giving you this emotional narrative about guilt that Christopher feels for not being able to protect his brother. And it sets up a bit of a mystery there on, you know, what happened to him and how it connects to everything else. And it's not like a bad attempt or anything, but it just really feels out of place because it doesn't exactly land when it's fucking Winnie the Pooh and the gang just killing people for the vast majority of the runtime. So the emotional story that they're trying to weave in there, like jump scares to this killing montage, really conflicts with that because it just doesn't work. No one's going to care about that storyline. Not that it's poorly crafted or anything, but that's just not the focal point of the film. The film is focused entirely on killing. And they establish that immediately upon starting this film. They don't even really have a good reason for why Winnie the Pooh and the crew go on this killing rampage. Like the scene where they just start killing people at a rave. All Like Owl just says, I hope you're ready to party. And then Tigger and Pooh start executing hundreds of people and the reason because fuck you that's why i mean there is like a light reason that owl sprinkled in in like two sentences where he's like if the humans keep coming to us eventually we're just gonna have to roll over and die so let's take the fight to them and just kill them all so that's why they're why, why they're out here hunting everyone but yeah the the story here like I, again i don't even think it's bad like the backstory is simple but effective also, the entire plot, like the actual story, is extremely predictable. I think you will figure out 
everything the second that it starts introducing those narrative plot threads because it's very obvious where all of it goes. It's simple, it's not bad, but it just doesn't add anything to th- add anything to this film besides just being like this side quest outside of just surviving the killings. It just, I don't know, it's very underwhelming. Like, they could have just doubled down on the over-the-top goofiness of everything instead of making like a story that tries to take itself seriously. Make a story that doesn't. Luckily, it's not a long movie, so even though a lot of time is spent with this story, which is a fucking snooze fest, it at least doesn't bore you to tears because the movie is so short that you're still mainly getting tons of, like, over-the-top violence in this film that keeps you engaged with it. Because that's really all the film offers. It's just a bunch of mindless killing in creative yucky ways. So while I may not agree with the experts at Rotten Tomatoes that this is a 100% certified fucking fresh, and I don't even agree with the audience score that it's an 80%, I, I still think that it's definitely better, just not good. If I was to put this film on the moist meter, I think I'd give Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 a 40%. And maybe that's being too generous, but I I really can't stress enough how much better this one is than the first one. Which again isn't saying a lot, but I at least appreciate they're going in an upward trajectory here. It, it's showing that they're they're learning from previous mistakes. Their past sins are being uh, rectified. They're trying to bury that and and be better from it. But yeah, I think I'd give it like a forty percent. I guess yeah. <laughs> so. Definitely not a 100%. Don't listen to that baloney. That's really about it. See ya.